so Bootstrap 4 is currently in its alpha phase and I'm getting a bit curious about uh, the documentation and what it has to offer. I've seen other blogs and uh, YouTube channels already doing videos on it and I've kind of uh, held back on that because I want to wait to do a full series once it's in production and there's no telling how long that's going to be. Uh, but that doesn't mean we can't set up a testing environment so that we can uh, dive right into the documentation and uh, see some of the newer things. What we're going to be doing in this video is setting up a Gulp and Browser Sync uh, testing area and we're going to be using Bootstrap uh, version 4 with the Node Package Manager. I'll give you a quick preview of what we're going to be doing. I'll resize this so I can show you the live reload. And I'll change this to just type something simple. You can see when I save that it refreshes here and also with the CSS background color we'll get this we'll use one of the bootstrap variables about brand dash danger we'll save that and you'll see that uh, the body has a background color of this red and the red comes from the bootstrap brand dash danger so let's go ahead and set this up. Um, I'm going to start a new one from scratch. So let me resize my windows really quick. Now, this video assumes that you already have Node installed. So to do that, you'll need to go to nodejs.org and download a uh, the latest version for your operating system. At this time, I'm using 4.6. Uh, for Mac. Um, once you have that, you'll have Node Package Manager uh, installed as well, and you'll be ready to set up a testing environment. I'm going to let me zoom in here. I'll start over. I'm going to type cd dot dot forward slash, and that's going to get me out of this folder here. Hit return. And what I'm going to do is type mkdir for make directory, and we'll call this one uh, just bootstrap-4-test dash dash and hit return. And we're going to change directory into that folder, dash 4-test. Dash and to start a new project with Node Package Manager, you have to type out npm init. And hit return and then it's going to give you a series of options and uh, you can set them to whatever you want I'm just going to hit return and hit return again I'll just type a testing environment for bootstrap 4 and because that's what we're going to be building out oops and hit return again again no Git repository yet. I'll more than likely put this up. I actually just um, wiped my Mac, so I have to set everything up again, which is kind of why I did this. I'm going to hit return. I'll just type in test. And for the author, I'll put my GitHub username, and um, at some point in the future, I'll get this up there. Definitely before uh, the production version of Bootstrap 4 is uh, released. Hit return again. Hit yes, it's okay. Now, I need several packages, and I'll just go to their websites and show you what I'm going to be getting. Number one is Browser Sync. And instead of copying this command, I'm actually going to go to the documentation and copy the one for Gulp. Because I want that as well. So I need Browser Sync, I need Gulp, and I'm also going to need Bootstrap. As well as um, SCSS for our uh, compiling. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just copy this command and go back to my terminal and paste it into here. npm install browser sync gulp save dev. 
hit return. We'll wait for that to install. I think what we'll be taking a look at for the Bootstrap documentation first is um, using some of the mix-ins. So we're not going to actually use all of the Bootstrap code. We're just going to check out some of the mix-ins and see if they've uh, done anything different from Bootstrap 3. Um, I haven't had much time to look into it, so I'm going to be kind of going uh, through this for the first time. All right, so this is finished. Let me just go ahead and open up that folder in Atom, which is the text editor that I use. And we'll make sure that uh, the node modules were installed. Bootstrap 4 test. I'm going to hit open. And it looks like we have our package.json file with browser sync and go. And we also have uh, our modules set up, or at least installed. Uh, we need one more, and that's going to be uh, npm install dash dash save dash dev gulp dash sass because bootstrap 4 is done with uh, sass we'll let that one install another thing I'd like to check out from the bootstrap docs is the flex grid um, I don't have much experience with that I've used it with foundation 6 and several projects but it's still fairly new and uh, well, what's going on here okay let's finish uh, finally we're gonna need um, the bootstrap 4 so let's go back to bootstrap and check out the documentation and I think on the download page here we go we can copy this command here. We paste this in here and hit return. And then we should be set up. Uh, okay. It also includes uh, tether and jQuery, which is required for the JavaScript. Um, okay, so when you're using Gulp for development, you're going to need what's called a gulp file and this has all of your settings so let's create that and we'll save it uh, for gulp file.js and I'm just going to copy the settings directly from browser sync so I'm going to go back to that tab and I'm not going to take this one I want the next one because it includes CSS injecting and uh, live reloading of HTML files. Now I'll paste this here. And as you can see, uh, once you read the code, uh, we're going to need a folder called app and we're also going to need another folder for our SCSS. And then um, every time we save that SCSS, it's going to compile it into CSS and create the folder uh, here in the same app folder. So I'm just going to right click here and then type app. And then within app, I'm going to create another folder called SCSS. And then finally within that file, I'm going to create, excuse me, within that folder, I'm going to create the file app.scss and save it like that. The next thing I'm going to do is import all of the bootstrap code. And the way I like to do it is I like to create and copy the bootstrap file from the node modules package. I'll show you what I mean. I'll type underscore bootstrap dot SCSS and I'll hit return. And then under the node modules folder, I'm going to find that same file under bootstrap SCSS and then it's way down here and I'm going to copy all of its contents so I'm going to select everything copy it and then paste it here and in bootstrap 4 there's actually a new file uh, that we're not used to or that we haven't seen before and that's the custom file 
and the custom file is where you override all of the bootstrap variables so let's find the custom file it's right here and what it is um, out of the box is just a comment block and it explains what this file is for I'm gonna copy everything and then I'll close that out and then in the same SCSS folder I'm gonna create another file called custom .scss and I'll just save it for now and I'll make sure that uh, this one's saved and I'll import bootstrap into my main file app.scss and then I'll save that now uh, before we go any further I want to do two things one I want to test and make sure that uh, the gulp command works and uh, two I want to make sure that my server goes up so I'm gonna switch back to my terminal and I'm just gonna type out the command gulp and hit return task default is not in your gulp file I probably didn't save this one yet so let me just save that I'll come back and run the command again gulp and hit return and we'll see what it does oh we have an error file to import not found or unreadable variables okay so what this means is we need to fix the path here on this uh, on this file and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna highlight everything there and then hit command D and then just select everything and I'm gonna change this path so I need to go up one folder out of SCSS I need to go up another out of app and then I need to go into node modules bootstrap forward slash scss forward slash and then save uh, the only difference um, between this and other setups is that the custom file is going to be actually in my app folder and then I'll just save it like that so let's go back to terminal and check the command again and hopefully we get no errors so what we see at the top left is cannot get forward slash and this means two things one um, our server is working but uh, there's no file to get if you recall in the gulp file.js we're serving up um, from this folder and it's looking for uh, the root or excuse me the index.html file so we need to create that in the app folder index.html and while we're in there why don't we go ahead and set up the document I'll be using Emmet and I'm just gonna type HTML colon 5 and hit tab and under the title how about oops bootstrap for preview and then it's also include our CSS dot forward slash CSS forward slash app dot CSS and one thing we didn't check was the CSS folder that was created when we ran the initial gulp command and all of the CSS that was included, which is a full um, Bootstrap 4. Go ahead and save that. And in the body, I'll just type out something like test and hit save. And let's refresh. And now we got the word test, and you know that it's in Bootstrap because of the Helvetica font. One last thing to check is the bootstrap variables and how we can use the custom file to override that I'm gonna create a simple button that's gonna use the class uh, btn and btn-primary and I'll just type the word button and save that save that 
it didn't refresh it should have let me make sure that uh about this I'll try that again okay now it refreshes sometimes when you create a new file while the gulp task is running um, you have to stop the task with control C and then restart it again uh, so that some of the newer files can get picked up okay so in the custom file we can override some of the bootstrap variables um, we know that brand primary is the variable for uh, the primary blue color and uh, we can override that by adding in our own color so I, I don't know I'll just make up anything and then save it and when we come back you'll see that um, our brand primary is now this sort of mustard yellow color instead of the blue if I comment this out and come back it's gone back to the default bootstrap um, primary color so you can already tell that this custom file is going to be pretty powerful especially when it comes to creating your own themes uh, for bootstrap 4 which seems like a pretty good idea maybe we'll get into that um, once bootstrap 4 is into production but for now um, what I want to do is just kind of dive into the documentation and you know see what some of the newer features are especially that flexbox Um, so that's going to be it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you know anyone that could learn from it, please feel free to share it and um, subscribe, like the video, and thanks for watching.